For centuries, the Roman dodecahedron was treated as a historical oddity, a strange bronze shape with no explanation, a curiosity tucked away in museum storage rooms, barely worth a footnote. But in recent years, that changed. Not because we finally found a Roman manual describing its purpose, but because new evidence suggests Rome may have deliberately erased it. No inscriptions, no official records, no mention by emperors, engineers, or historians. In an empire that documented everything from military supply chains to the price of grain, this object was rendered invisible. And now, discoveries made between 2023 and 2025 suggest the dodecahedron was not just mysterious, it may have been forbidden. What is the Roman dodecahedron? Roman dodecahedra are small, hollow bronze objects made of 12 pentagonal faces, each pierced by a circular hole of varying diameter. Every corner is topped with a carefully cast knob, small spherical protrusions that serve no obvious mechanical function. No two dodecahedra are exactly the same. The holes vary in size from face to face. The proportions change from object to object, but the geometry is always deliberate, always precise, always intentional. As of today, just over 130 confirmed examples exist across European collections. That alone is strange. Rome mass-produced tools, weapons, and household objects by the thousands, not dozens. Roman factories churned out identical swords, identical coins, identical pottery. Standardization was the backbone of imperial efficiency. Yet these objects were crafted in bronze, using advanced metallurgical techniques with no clear function and in startlingly small numbers. They are not prototypes. They are not failures. They are something else entirely. There is another detail historians cannot ignore, a detail that transforms confusion into suspicion. Not a single Roman dodecahedron has ever been found in Rome, not in Italy, not in the eastern provinces, not in Greece, Egypt, Syria, or North Africa. Instead, they appear almost exclusively along the western and northern frontier, Britain, Gaul, Germania, the Low Countries, and occasionally the fringes of the Alps. For an empire obsessed with standardization and cultural export, this distribution is deeply abnormal. Roman religion spread everywhere. Roman architecture spread everywhere. Roman law spread everywhere. But not the dodecahedron. It suggests the object did not belong to official Roman culture, even if Roman hands helped make it even if Roman bronze was used, even if Roman techniques were involved, the dodecahedron remained stubbornly local, stubbornly silent, stubbornly outside the system, too precise to be useless. The craftsmanship raises even more questions. Many dodecahedra were cast as single bronze pieces using lost wax methods that required expert control, specialized molds, and high temperature furnaces. This was not amateur work. This was skilled, expensive labor dedicated to producing objects with no apparent use. Some are so precisely balanced, they can rest evenly on multiple faces, a feature unnecessary for any known Roman tool. The knobs at each corner add weight symmetrically, suggesting deliberate engineering. Inside, they are completely hollow. No markings, no fittings, no residue consistent with mechanical use, no wear patterns suggesting repeated handling or contact with other materials. They are too fragile to be weapons, too complex to be toys, too inconsistent to be standardized measuring devices, too valuable to be disposable. And yet, many people, across decades or centuries, deemed them valuable enough to cast in bronze. That bronze could have been swords. That bronze could have been coins. That bronze could have been tools. Instead, it became this. Why every practical theory fails. Candlestick holders, no scorch marks, no wax residue, no soot deposits. 
The holes would make them terrible at holding candles anyway. Knitting tools or yarn gauges, Roman knitting did not require gauges, and metallurgy this advanced makes no sense for a domestic accessory. You do not cast precision bronze objects to measure wool. Military rangefinders or surveying instruments, hole sizes are not standardized. They are never found with weapons, surveying equipment, or military installations. Roman surveyors had their own well-documented tools, and none of them looked like this. Children's toys, too heavy, too sharp at the edges, too expensive. No ancient source mentions them as playthings. Dice or gaming pieces, the holes and knobs make them impossible to roll fairly. Roman dice were standardized cubes, not elaborate geometric sculptures. Every practical theory collapses under scrutiny, which leaves only one category. Objects not meant for daily life. Objects meant for something else entirely. The discovery that changed everything. In 2023, something unprecedented happened. In the English village of Norton Disney, Lincolnshire, amateur archaeologists working with professional oversight uncovered a Roman dodecahedron in perfect archaeological context. This was not pulled from a river. It was not found in a farmer's field. It was not purchased from a dealer with no provenance. It was carefully excavated, layer by layer, from undisturbed Roman-era soil. It was found alongside 3rd century Roman coins, pottery fragments, iron tools, structural remains of a possible villa or workshop. Most importantly, it was buried in what archaeologists call a sealed context, a deliberate deposit, undisturbed for nearly 1,700 years. That means it was not lost, it was not dropped, it was not discarded, it was placed deliberately, intentionally. Someone in Roman Britain decided this object belonged in the ground and made sure it stayed there. A device designed for light, the Norton Disney dodecahedron is one of the best preserved examples ever found. Its surfaces are intact, its holes are clear, its knobs are undamaged. When raised into sunlight, it casts complex shifting shadows, pentagonal shapes that move depending on angle and time of day. Rotate it and the pattern changes. Tilt it and the shadows stretch and compress. One archaeologist described it as an object designed to interact with light, not to block light, not to reflect light, but to shape it, to transform it, to do something with it that we do not yet fully understand. That observation would later prove unsettlingly accurate. Where theories begin to turn dark, experimental reconstructions changed everything. When modern replicas were tested in controlled sunlight, researchers noticed the holes projected circular beams that formed predictable geometric patterns on flat surfaces. During equinox conditions, when day and night are equal, some models cast rotating pentagonal outlines as the sun moved across the sky. Not random shadows, structured movement, predictable geometry, like a dial but without numbers, like a calendar but without dates, like a tool but without a manual. Some researchers now believe dodecahedra may have been used to track solar positions, marking agricultural or ceremonial dates important to pre-Roman Celtic populations. Others suggest they functioned as ritual objects, devices for reading omens, interpreting light or communicating with forces beyond the visible world. Neither theory can be proven, but neither can be dismissed. The residue no one expected. Chemical analysis delivered the biggest shock. Several authentic dodecahedra examined using modern spectroscopy contained microscopic traces of burned organic material, carbon particles, copper salts, animal blood proteins, alongside botanical residues, lavender, thyme, pine or fir resin. All substances historically associated with funerary rites and purification rituals across Celtic and Roman cultures. In one case, 
residue matched compounds used in ancient embalming mixtures, substances designed to preserve the dead or ease their passage to the afterlife. This was not contamination. It was not accidental. It was intentional use. Someone burned offerings inside these objects. Someone used them in ceremonies. Someone treated them as sacred, older than Rome itself. Then came the 2025 revelation. Metallurgical testing suggested some dodecahedra, including the Norton Disney example, were made using pre-Roman Celtic bronze recipes, alloy compositions that predate Roman conquest, techniques that do not match imperial standards, that places their origin before Rome arrived, before legions marched into Gaul and Britain, before the empire absorbed these territories. This means not Roman military tools, not imperial instruments, not sanctioned religious objects. Instead, they likely originated in indigenous ritual traditions that Rome later absorbed, but never accepted, never endorsed, never documented. Why Rome never wrote them down. Roman law aggressively criminalized unsanctioned divination and local spiritual practices. Magic, prophecy, unauthorized rituals, communication with spirits. These weren't just frowned upon. They were illegal, punishable by exile, punishable by death. Objects associated with those practices weren't documented. They weren't cataloged. They weren't preserved in official records. They were ignored, suppressed, or quietly buried. The dodecahedron's silence in Roman records now looks less like an accident and more like a policy, a deliberate erasure, a systematic forgetting. The final uncomfortable pattern, despite over 130 confirmed examples across Europe, no major institutional study existed before 2020. Museums held them in storage for decades. Young archaeologists avoided the topic entirely. Academic papers treated them as curiosities, not priorities. Why? Because the dodecahedron does not fit Rome's narrative of order, logic, and control. It does not match the empire we want to remember the empire of roads and aqueducts and written law. It represents something older, something spiritual, something Rome could not fully absorb, something Rome could not fully erase, and perhaps something scholars, even today, are not entirely comfortable confronting. The Roman dodecahedron is not just an unsolved puzzle. It is not a trivia question. It is not a footnote. It is a reminder that history is not written only by what survives, but by what is allowed to be remembered. Empires do not just conquer territory. They conquer memory. They decide what gets recorded and what gets buried, what gets celebrated and what gets forgotten. For nearly 2,000 years, the dodecahedron survived that erasure, hidden in soil, locked in storage rooms, waiting. And now, finally, we are starting to listen. Because sometimes the most dangerous objects are not weapons, they are not armies, they are not invasions, they are ideas. And ideas, it turns out, are very hard to kill. 